Welcome to my humble abode, your go-to channel for skincare. I'm not a professional and I don't claim to be one. I'm just a girl who is crazy over skincare. So in today's video, we are going to discuss my best cleansers for dry skin. There is a timestamp in the description box below. So if you want to jump around the products, you're more than welcome to. There's also some discount codes if you want to use. If you're part of the dry skin clan or the damaged barrier clan, unfortunately, we can't just go in with any type of cleanser. In the state that our skin is, we cannot afford to be losing any moisture, especially during cleansing. So we need cleansers that are going to effectively clean our skin but not strip the moisture from our skin because hante there is barely moisture here and we can't be giving that away for free so these are my go-to cleansers as a dry baby so the first cleanser that we are going to be discussing is the la roche posay tolerain dermo cleanser cleansing and makeup removal fluid face and eyes all types of in tolerant skin so i'm going to give you a little secret i only deep cleanse my skin once a day so i do that effective clean only at night the reason for this is during the day i am picking up dust i'm picking up dirt i'm fighting free radicals I'm sweating, so I really need to cleanse my skin effectively at night. At night I go in and I put on my beautiful essences and serums and moisturizers and I'm not jogging in my sleep, I'm not over sweating, I'm not picking up any dust and dirt. So in the morning I don't really need to effectively clean my skin. I still have all those beautiful products from the night. So I just need something that's very, very gentle. That's just going to give me that, like, girl, I washed my face this morning feeling. So I don't really need to effectively clean in the morning because I'm not removing dirt and sebum buildup and SPF and all of those good stuff. So that's where the La roche Posay comes in. Okay, so in terms of ingredients with this product, First on the list is La Roche-Posay Prebiotic Thermal Water. This is like a patent water. This water is sourced in the heart of France, in the town of La Roche-Posay, and it is a soothing water. So I can't speak on behalf of this water, and I definitely can't confirm that it is a miracle water, but it is Francais sounding, and it works really well in this product. So I really like this product because the ingredient list is really, really simple. It's got humectants and moisturizers that I like, such as glycerin, which is actually found in your skin, so it's a skin-identical ingredient. There's also propylene glycol and glycerin, and propylene glycol are high on the ingredient list, so they are very concentrated, so incredibly hydrating. Lower on the ingredient list are other humectants and moisturizers such as caprolyl glycol and panthenol. There are two stars in here and those are ceramide NP and niacinamide. Ooh. These are really some star ingredients but you are going to be washing it off so it kind of doesn't matter that there's ceramides and niacinamide in here because ideally for those to be effective, they would have to be in your skin for a lengthy amount of time. There are some very mild and gentle cleansers in here. They are polysorbate 60 and coco betaine. Last on this list is tea butyl alcohol, but relax. This is a fatty alcohol and it acts as an emollient. It is not the drying alcohol, so not the bad alcohol. And especially for us dry babies, you know, we don't want any drying alcohol in our ingredient list. So like I said, this does not effectively clean. It doesn't do a squeaky clean clean. <laughs> that sounded funny. But it is very, very hydrating and it's an effective cleanser for my morning routine. So next up is one of my favorite cleansers. We are going to be discussing the Hey Gorgeous Aloe and Chamomile Cleanser. 
So this has aloe and chamomile distillate in it, which is just basically aloe and chamomile water. It has rose water in it, which is great for pH balancing. It's also known to be antibacterial and anti-inflammatory. So next it has jojoba in it, and this comes from a plant. Jojoba is known for its healing properties. It's very effective with treating skin conditions like eczema, psoriasis and very good for sensitive skin. It also has calendula in it which is an antifungal, antibacterial, anti-inflammatory plant extract um, also known to be very soothing. There is citric acid and it will just act as your pH adjuster so you're getting a good pH balance in this. Then there's rose essential oil in here. I know but it is going to be washed off so it's not that big of a deal it is chamomile of course and chamomile is known for its soothing and its calming properties and then there is radish root ferment which is the preservative system that hey gorgeous uses this is definitely one of my favorite cleansers i often find myself reaching for this when i first got it i didn't think that it could effectively clean my skin because it has a moisturizer texture very much like the La Roche Posay. So naturally I thought that I would use it in the very similar way that I use it to the La Roche Posay. But this cleanser shook me girl. I just want to show you in terms of texture what I was talking about. So look at how it just disappears into the skin like a moisturizer. So I didn't think that this could effectively clean my skin. But this literally leaves my skin squeaky clean and it does not strip my skin moisture at all it is so amazing and if you have dry skin i promise you you're just gonna love this so this is definitely also a must-have on your list okay so let's move on to some korean cleansers because you know they just do it so good in asia so one of my favorite ones of course is the real barrier cream cleansing foam the surfactants that are used in here and when i use the word surfactants it is the actual cleansing agents that are being used and i'm gonna have to read them because they are difficult and i may be pronouncing them wrong as well i should start my youtube video saying hi on this channel we butcher the pronunciation of skincare ingredients potassium cocosyl glycinate disodium coco amphodiate Cetate. Ooh, I'm gonna just list them at the bottom, okay, girl. Potassium cocoate, disodium, cocal glutamate, sodium sweet almond for acetate. So, the point is, the pronunciation is not the point. The point is that these are mild cleansing agents. They do not strip your skin from its moisture. They are very gentle surfactants. But they do a very effective job in cleansing and cleaning your skin. There are some great humectants and moisturizers in here as well, as well as antioxidants. But like I said, you know, it doesn't matter because it is not going to be on your skin for long enough. You are going to be washing it off. So the main thing is that the surfactants that are used here are very, very gentle and that they don't strip your skin. Definitely one of the cleansers I find myself reaching for when I want to see some foam action happening on my face because you saw that the Hey Gorgeous doesn't give that. Um, but this one does give you slight foam but it does not strip your skin barrier. So really, really great. And then last on the list we have the Hamish all clean green foam this foam has a ph of 5.5 which is super perfect for your skin ph level your skin ph should be at 5.5 so this is not adjusting your skin ph in any way it also has very mild and gentle surfactants in here such as potassium laureate phosphate and i'm just gonna have to read um some of the others which is laurel hydroxy solutane Potassium cocoa glutamate and cocoa glucoside. There's also some great antioxidants such as Centella asiatica extract. But like I said, that doesn't really count because you are going to be washing it off your face. 
but what I did want to mention is that there is witch hazel water in here and I know that people have demonized witch hazel um, I feel like if you're gonna demonize witch hazel you also have to demonize tea tree oil so the problem with witch hazel is it is a plant extract and it is a drying antioxidant a drying antioxidant is called tannins tea tree actually has far more tannins than witch hazel does the problem that people have though is the way that it is extracted it is extracted using alcohol so you already have a drying antioxidant plant and then you're extracting it with a drying alcohol and you're just giving the skin way too much dryness in this case though they did not extract it using a drying alcohol the witch hazel is not on the top of the list so it is not in a high concentration it's actually towards the middle to the bottom bit and you know that i don't have a problem with witch hazel as long as it is in a low concentration and it is distilled via water and not alcohol so in this case it meets my requirements as a dry baby for witch hazel to be present in the ingredient list for me to actually say okay i'm going to be using this product this cleanser has mild surfactants, it does a really good job at cleaning my skin and it does not strip my moisture barrier. If you have more dry to combination skin, you are absolutely going to love this. If you have extremely dry skin, I don't think that you're going to opt for this, but it still is part of my list for dry skin cleansers. And finally, we have question of the week where you ask me your skincare question on Instagram and I answer it here on my weekly YouTube video. So today's question of the week comes from Coco Chanel with an X and she is asking, I use a 2% salicylic acid cleaner. Can I use 2% BHA tonic from Skin Functional after? So firstly, salicylic acid should be used by people who have very oily skin and people who suffer with acne prone skin. However, people with dry skin can also use it, but it should be used in much lower concentrations. 2% of salicylic acid is the sweet spot for salicylic acid. So that's great that you're using salicylic acid if you have oily skin or you suffer from acne prone skin. It's perfectly fine, hun, because ideally that 2% of salicylic acid that you're using in your cleanser, you should be cleansing your skin for like 45 seconds and then you're going to wash it off. So it's not sitting on your skin. You then go in with the 2% BHA toner, which now actually sits on your skin and actually gets in and works and cleans all of that muck and that dirt and does everything that someone who has oily skin or acne prone skin needs what i would say though is not to go in with it every single day i would say the max you should go in with that toner is perhaps twice a week you need to remember that you don't want to over exfoliate your skin if you over exfoliate your skin you can actually damage your skin barrier when you have a damaged skin barrier i always use this as an illustration this is a healthy skin so basically all the good stuff all of your moisture stays in all of the free radicals, pollutants that's in the air, etc. deflect off your skin. But if you have a damaged skin barrier, this is what your skin starts looking like. So you struggle to hold on to moisture and bacteria and infections can easily get into your skin. So you're actually causing much more problems for yourself. The work that it takes to repair your skin barrier is real, girlfriend. So that's it for today. If you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. If you've gotten this far, then you might as well subscribe to my channel. And always a fabulous time. I can't wait to see you again.